is the time. The Supreme Court has ruled that the government's plan to send asylum seekers and refugees to Rwanda and leave them there, regardless of whether their application was successful or not, has um, uh, been rejected by the Supreme Court. The, the reason why it's been rejected, because again, I think this is something that I, well, people don't understand, and I don't think it's your fault if you don't understand it. I think that a lot of the people reporting on this don't understand it. We know for a fact that senior conservative politicians supporting this so-called policy didn't understand it. The simple fact of the matter is Rwanda is not safe, and therefore this policy is not legal. So if the plan was to deport people to France, and France agreed that's quite crucial, there wouldn't be a problem. I, I can't foresee the Supreme Court or the Appeal Court or any of the courts that have ruled this unlawful having any problem at all with that proposal. If, if, you were, if the third country was a safe country, then there wouldn't be a problem. But the, but, the, but the finding is that it's not a safe country. And if you want to live in a country where Suella Braverman who dreams of deporting people to a place where refugees get shot dead by police, gets to decide whether it's safe or not, then I, I, I think you've got to give your head a bit of a bubble. These decisions are reached by independent judiciaries. And the decision is, it is not safe. Do you want to hear two minutes of the ruling from the Supreme Court just a few moments ago? Well, uh, whether you do or not, you're about to. As I've explained, the legal test which has to be applied in this case is whether there are substantial grounds for believing that asylum seekers sent to Rwanda would be at real risk of reformant. In the light of the evidence which I have summarised, the Court of Appeal concluded that there were such grounds. We are unanimously of the view that they were entitled to reach that conclusion. Indeed, having been taken through the evidence ourselves, we agree with their conclusion. We accept the Home Secretary's submission that the Rwandan government entered into the agreement in good faith and that the capacity of the Rwandan system to produce accurate and fair decisions can and will be built up. Nevertheless, asking ourselves whether there were substantial grounds for believing that a real risk of reformant existed at the relevant time, we have concluded that there were. The changes needed to eliminate the risk of reformant may be delivered in the future, but they have not been shown to be in place now. The Home Secretary's appeal is therefore dismissed. There is also a cross appeal on behalf of one of the asylum claimants who argues that the Rwandan policy is in breach of retained EU law, as well as being unlawful for the reasons that I've already explained. We reject that argument on the basis that under an Act of Parliament enacted in 2020, the EU provisions in question ceased to have effect at the end of that year. The cross appeal is therefore also dismissed. 24 minutes after 10 is the time. The key decision there, the upholding of the appeal um, uh, and the decision that the government's plan to deport people to Rwanda is unlawful because Rwanda is unsafe. The president of the Supreme Court, Laudry, delivering that widely expected verdict, although, of course, not by any stretch of the imagination guaranteed. I think that we will park Suella Braverman for a moment if we can just focus on your reactions to that ruling um because I, I at risk of sounding a little bit uh aloof if you genuinely understand what was at stake here I don't understand how you can have wanted it to go through unless you're prepared to say I really want refugees to be sent to an unsafe country it's it's bizarre it's just bizarre what's happened to our country in the last few years. It, even if you think we take too many refugees, even if I let you hold on to that opinion, despite the fact that it doesn't really stand up to international comparisons or scrutiny, even if you think there are just too many people here and therefore the best people to get rid of are recent arrivals and foreigners, it, it, even if you think any of those things, it shouldn't lead you to where Suella Braverman goes. It shouldn't leave you to the belief that refugees should be sent to a country where refugees get shot. It just shouldn't. But 
I'm always open to persuasion, and I will open up the phone lines now on the on the simple question of what 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 do you think of this? What does it do to the broader question of politics? What does it do to Rishi Sunak? We know it's dashed Suella Braverman's dreams. And if you want to get emotional and tell me why there's a tear in your eye today, then feel free to do that as well. 0345 6060 973 is the number that you need. Because I'll tell you now, nobody's got the answers to these questions yet. What can the government do? What will the government do? The government don't know. Make noises, uh, read the room, change the law. We shall see. But, but but what are your immediate reactions to this news? Because from where I'm sitting, I mean, it's terrible that we've had to come to this, but it's about the best news we've had in the context of persecuting foreigners since 2016. 27 after 10 is the time. Natasha Clark is LBC's political editor and she is at the Supreme Court. What happens now? This is going to be really hard, I think, James, for him, the Prime Minister, that is to get out of. I don't quite see the way ahead. That uh, judgment that was just handed down to us just now was incredibly damning. um, And also, crucially, it was agreed by all five of the Supreme Court justices. Now, last time at the Court of Appeal, we had a split judgment where there was one judge who disagreed with the other two on the application of this point of law. But not today. All five of them unanimously agreed that there is a chance that anybody that is sent to Rwanda as part of the Home Secretary's uh, migration policy could be then sent back to their home nation uh, where they could be at risk of ill treatment. And that is the foundation of this judgment today, the point of law that was being looked at. They essentially agreed. Lord Justice uh, Reid, reading out the decision today, said he agreed with the Court of Appeal uh, and all of the points in it. I don't quite see how Rishi Sunak has any wiggle room today to get out of that. He is going to be scratching his head now looking at how to respond to this and we should be getting a statement at some point this morning from the government uh, on what their next steps might be. I was speaking to some people yesterday who suggested that if they lose today there could be a possibility of doing a legally binding treaty with Rwanda to try and get around some of those uh, legal pitfalls they referred to them as. But I don't quite see how that would work in light of this judgment today, because all of these judges agree that there is still that risk of people being sent from Rwanda to an unsafe third country. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that a treaty with Rwanda uh, would allay any of those concerns. So any hope of wiggle room, which under most analyses was Rishi Sunak's best chance here, has been summarily removed by the by the judges. Yeah, I think so. I mean, re- reading that judgment that's just come out, the, the final section, um, they've dismissed basically everything that the Home Secretary put to them uh, to appeal it. The only thing that they did uh, accept was that the Home Secretary in Rwanda did agree and enter the agreement in good faith. Um, But yes, just listening to him just now, they said that there was a risk that the court system uh, would be biased if there were any appeals in Rwanda for hearing these people's cases for why they should be allowed to stay and not be sent uh, to another country or back home. Uh, And they also uh, made the point that even the UK government themselves have made several complaints about the treatment of not just the Rwandan government, but the police, uh, including threats to kill people here in Britain as well. So it's painting a very damning picture of Rwanda as a country uh, that obviously judges here feel it is not a safe country to send refugees uh, and asylum seekers to. Uh, I I can say I just do not see how the government uh, can make a case that Rwanda is a safe country uh, to do so because these all these five judges are appeal, uh, are uni- unanimous in that decision. 487 asylum decisions in 2021 in total for, for the whole of Rwanda. Um, just shy of 140,000 cases in the UK asylum backlog. So it is, it's an utterly irrelevant policy in numerical terms or statistical terms. Why has it assumed such epic significance politically? It was obviously a huge gamble um, for the Prime Minister of the time, Boris Johnson, and for the Home Secretary of the time, Priti Patel, to even engage in the idea uh, of sending asylum seekers to Rwanda. Um, Their their country is just not equipped to deal with this, like you say, just in terms of the sheer numbers. I saw pictures of Suella Braverman cackling outside what she claimed were the facilities in which the refugees would be housed. Yeah, and I went to see them as well. I um, I went uh, to, to visit Hope House Hostel in Rwanda. They took us round. They showed us where the refugees would be staying. 
I'm not going to lie to you. It was seemed like perfectly fine accommodation to stay in, but that's not the point. The point is that Rwanda as a country cannot deal with the infrastructure, and that's what the courts have said today, with taking in all of the numbers of asylum seekers that we could possibly send from the UK over to Rwanda. And the judge today said the changes needed to eliminate the risk of reef almonds may be delivered in future, yes. but they have not shown to be in place now. This, this case, this Rwanda policy now appears to me just to be dead in the water. Um, thank you, Natasha Clark. And the scale, the strength of the judgment, the unanimity of the judgment being particularly pertinent to Natasha's conclusions about the future of this policy. I'm interested in its past as well. I, I, I mean, again, we could play the coma game. If you've been asleep for five years, you woke up today and the entire British media and political establishment is focused upon the, the, the Supreme Court rejection of a policy that would have barely nibbled at the edges of our asylum backlog. You sort of wonder what the hell was going on. But Natasha just told us obliquely, unwittingly, between the lines of what Natasha said, this dates back to Boris Johnson's premiership, where everything was about announcing stuff that would just get you through the next news cycle. Suella Braverman, perhaps too stupid to realise, and Pretty Patel too craven. But Boris Johnson, well, they're very cross about the old immigration, the old refugees, people in boats. Well, well let's just say we're going to deport them all to Rwanda. It's never going to happen, but, you know, uh, we'll, we'll have moved on to something else by this time tomorrow. That's what always happened with Boris Johnson. I got sick to death of explaining it to you. Whenever they said anything publicly, if it was coming from Johnson, then it was designed solely and exclusively to protect his backside or to promote his uh, desire for constant self-gratification. 